Speaker. Dr Megan Wood. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and it's my pleasure to take a call on this bill, and I mean that genuinely this time. I think that most, <laughs> that most, that most, most members actually enjoy, one of the, the enjoyable moments of taking a call in this House is on local bills. Usually they're bills that local people have worked tirelessly for, and that they're about what a community wants, and, that there's a great, and you know that there's a great deal of individual and community effort behind um, a local bill actually making its way to the floor of the House. So I would like to commend the people that have worked tirelessly to bring this bill to the floor of this House, to the Wellington City Council, for being the sponsor of this bill. And I could not commend my colleague, Grant Robertson, the MP for Wellington Central, who has proved Rachel Hunter right, that it won't happen overnight, but it will happen. As a candidate in 2008, he tirelessly campaigned on this issue and indeed mentioned it in his maiden speech that he gave to this House when he first became an MP. So I would like to commend Grant's work and the fact that he has seen this through, that after eight years of battling away, we are actually seeing those protections given to what is an important piece of legislation. And Mr Speaker, I think that um, what we're seeing here is um, the importance that people in cities place on areas such as the Wellington Town Belt within their city and what an important space they are. And we're also seeing the complexities that many of these spaces are in fact governed by their own trustees and indeed in some, place, in some cases acts of parliament that do require um, this, this House to get involved. I can see you're enthralled, Mr Speaker, do and in, in, um, require this House to get involved in any changes. And there are some very technical changes that have needed to be made. But fundamentally, what the deeds and the legislation are all about is making sure that we ensure that these spaces endure for future generations, that they don't get eroded as our cities spread and grow and intensify, that we do ensure that we keep these spaces dear. And Mr Speaker, this is very much keeping to the spirit of how and why it was that throughout New Zealand that we have a number of spaces like the, the Wellington Town Belt, that of course um, cities that were part of the New Zealand Company's plan for settlement and Edward Given Wakeford's um, dream of the utopia that he was going to create in New Zealand, that these spaces were very important. That in the 1840s when Edward Given Wakeford was, was drawing up his plans for the New Zealand settlement, he was dreaming about a place where public space wouldn't just, would be just that, public space, where the parklands wouldn't just be the preserve of the rich and the elite, as they yeah. were in mid-19th century Britain, but in the colonies, in the new world, that we would have these open to a number of people. And this was driven by a lot of the, the health concerns that were rampant in 19th century Britain, of course. The overcrowding was, was what it was happening to populations in cities in Britain, and that the new world would offer something different. They were called the lungs of the city, is what, we, what Edward Gibbon Wakefield ex imagined these reserves that would be established in the colonies would be. But you have to say, he did have his eye on the main chance. It wasn't just health and the desire to open the lands for the people. Um, he did also recognise that reserve lands were a good way of maintaining property values within a settlement and keeping prices up. Um, so I guess he, he, saw, he saw externalities in providing um, good protections and good recreational space to people who were moving into the cities of the new lands. But I think in many ways, the vision that lay behind why it was that we have these reserves throughout New Zealand in my own city, that Hagley Park is one of these reserves, remains. And the protections that this bill gives to ensure and to modernise that this reserve will maintain are very much what is needed. So if we go through these, Mr Speaker, the, to provide a transparent statutory basis for the Council's trusteeship and the management of the town belt on behalf of the inhabitants of Wellington. And I think we're seeing this emerge with a number of trustees, that there does need to be some clarification and some updating of exactly what that trustee that trusteeship and management looks like in the 21st century to maintain those original 19th century ideals that, that lay behind why it was that these spaces were created.
but it's also to impose on the council responsibilities and powers to protect, manage and enhance the town belt. And I think one of the anomalies that other members have mentioned, and I'm sure many others in their speeches after me will also me mention, that in the desire to protect the town belt, and to, to make sure that, that there wasn't an erosion of this space, that it was, as Grant Robinson said, frozen in time. And there didn't exist the ability to add to this major asset for the city and to in indeed increase the space. And I think that's something that we all in this House can look on and sensibly see that if there is a desire to add to the town belt in Wellington, that this is a positive thing and that we shouldn't have a trust deed that stands in the way of doing it and that that is something that needs to be um, tidied up. And I think one of the other things, if we look at Clause 8 of the Bill, which provides the clear description of the legal status of the belt, the key elements of this are that the Council holds the town belt on behalf of the inhabitants of Wellington, of Wellington as trustee of the trust created by a trustee. All this sounds incredibly dry, and in many ways it is, Mr Speaker. But in many ways, <laughs> that what it is, is it, it is about the fact that this is about preservation for future generations. Mr Speaker. This is not dry. This is important. This is about our responsibility to ensure that it is not only the people that have gone before us and ourselves that can enjoy these spaces, but that we do um, indeed ensure that they remain. And the City Committee for a Local Bill, there were a number of submissions. To have 30 submissions on a local bill, I think probably shows the politi political engagement of this particular area of, of New Zealand and the fact that um, the chance to submit will never be lost on a Wellingtonian, yeah. I think is probably one of the things that it shows. So to receive 30 submissions on this, but only two of them against the bill in its entirety, but it being a, a bell about central Wellington, it did offer some very useful suggestions. Um, through the way there and some tidies were made. But one of the things, like um, Mr Simpson mentioned in his speech, one of the things that struck me as a non-Wellington member of the committee was the passion that the people that did come and speak to the committee, the people that, that for whom this is a very special part of their city and something that they were more than willing to give up their time to make a submission and come to the committee and have their voices heard in their desire to ensure that this space is preserved for future generations. So I would like to commend those people and to thank them for their work. Um, that Grant has talked about some of the changes that were made at at Select Committee, and he spoke specifically about Clause 23 and about how it is that um, perhaps some of the changes that were made to Clause 23 now reflect the status quo rather than an improvement that could have been made, and that, we could have, and that was in many ways an opportunity lost. But nonetheless, um, because our member for Wellington Central says so, Labor is very happy to commend this bill to the House. <laughs>